Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this mini tiny painting. I love working on these for one, but I also love having them at conventions at my artist alley tables, but I almost never do because I always forget to prepare them in advance and most of my small pieces sell a lot faster than say my larger ones. So when I'm preparing for a convention, I usually only have my large paintings to bring as far as originals. So for this next one, for my next con, I wanted to sit down and actually dedicate some time to make some little paintings for the table. And I love doing that. I love it. I really do. And I, I have found that having a frame for these minis really makes the process just a completely different process for me. And I think the final product is significantly better, I guess you could say. I just think that it, it feels like it's a real painting and a real thing. and when I'm working on it, I love being able to work off of what is happening in the frame and then adapting it to that and making it all come together into this one harmonious end product, the painting and the frame together. I just love that process. I think it, it adds just that extra little bit of challenge as well as inspiration to the piece that it just helps me work through some things that maybe would have put me on the fence when I'm working with this kind of a an inspiration and a jumping off point. It helps me to make decisions, but, but yes, I, I do have this tiny frame and as I was working on it, I made sure to take stock in what exactly it looked like. So what I do this with anything that I'm sitting down, creating a painting for a frame. This is kind of the process that I go through, but I'll look at the frame and I'll figure out what's the style that it has, if it's more ornate and kind of, if there's any details into it. I also look for colors and overall color palette. So this one has this like warm silver tone to it with a little bit more gold in the crevices. And as it gets deeper into those little nooks and crannies, it gets to more of like a yellow ochre. And then it has these little red splatter drops all over it, which originally when I saw it, it got me really inspired about doing something that felt a little bit more graphic and maybe involved a little bit of blood. It didn't end up going that way with this painting, but I think I'm going to get another one of these frames and go down that path a little bit more. But, but anyways, I, I took stock in all of those things with the frame that way, as I'm drawing this and plan out the color palette, I can decide on a piece that's going to fit with the frame and fit with the colors. But as it turns out, while I was working on this piece, I ended up not a hundred percent loving how it ended up looking with the frame or as I was working on it, it didn't look as great with the frame as I wanted it to. And I think in the end that's okay because I wasn't 100% in love with the frame. I was pretty happy with it, but it wasn't necessarily one that it's like, yes, I would absolutely choose that one over any other frame. And as I was working more and more on this painting, I got to a point where I could redirect the painting a little bit so that it would begin to match the frame more but I chose instead to adapt the frame to the piece of artwork. That way I could take the art where I wanted it to be and I could make sure that the frame was something that I was 100% happy with. So in the end, I actually went in with almost like a staining process for the frame. And none of this is actually in the video, unfortunately. I wish I kind of had caught it, but all I did was I took some some acrylic paint and I mixed in a little bit of water to thin it down. And then I took a brush and I just rubbed it into all of the little crevices and I did a thinner coat on everything else and let kind of these streaky brush strokes show through on the larger shapes and then let it really congregate in those cracks. And that really helps it look a little bit more like it's realistically weathered because if you have a shape like this and it's naturally getting handled and worn, those deep impresses, I guess you could say, the crevices, those will, will hold on to the original color a lot longer and then the larger shapes will start wearing down more. So, so that allowed it to look a little bit more weathered and aged. You'll see the frame, how it ends up looking at the very end. And I love it. I was so excited about it and it did fit with the overall aesthetic that I wanted with the picture and the frame together. It was just a much happier marriage. Yeah, ultimately, if I had wanted to match it more to the f original frame, I could have had the background more of a true red and then probably made her hair a little bit more of a periwinkle purple tinted blue color rather than this more pure blue. But yeah, I think it was the right choice. I love how the the orange orange of the background and then this blue in her hair has this complimentary look to it. And then with the black frame, 
it just helps it to to really come together but but that could have been the option if i had wanted to drive it in a different direction a little bit more and i love painting in these little eyes they're so simple and easy to add but i think that it adds just that little bit of spookiness to it i guess i i did make sure that after i did the first initial wash over the background I created this shadow edge around the where the eyelid would be in the eye and then underneath the eye and it's subtle. I really didn't want the eyes to look like fully fleshed out eyes or anything like that. I wanted them to feel more like an entity or a presence, but not a physical creature there. So having just that little bit of shadow form helps it to pop off a bit, but because overall, mostly it's all the same value, it helps it all come together and almost appear more like a pattern happening in the background. Towards the end, I actually go in with my white gel pen to add highlights all over the painting, but I add a little bit of gloss to the eyes too. And I think that that looks kind of cool where it just almost feels more like this 3D popping off effect rather than, than straight up eyes just floating back there. I kind of want to do more stuff like this, something that, well, I think that I'd like to do a little bit more fleshed out things like this, but something that hints at more happening in the background and also has this creepiness to it. I know this painting is not over the top creepy by any means, but I do love stuff like that that gives you a little bit of more of an eerie feel to it. And when I'm working on mini paintings like this, I always make sure that I incorporate some shiny paints to it. When I'm working big, it's usually going to end up as a print and those shiny details just get eaten up. You cannot print out in metallic ink, unfortunately. But when I'm doing tiny ones, it's just this like special little treat that I know that I can incorporate it into the painting and it's gonna get the full effect as this painting. So it's, it's a nice little treat for myself, but also I think for anyone who's looking at them because they're not over the top but they're just a little bit of that shimmer when you tilt it in the light. In this painting, I have this like pearly white one and I, I'm using Fine Techs. I'll, I'll link to both of the palettes that I'm using down below. I think I have their, their gold palette. I also have one that has like a rainbow of metallic colors, but I have this pearly one that I went over certain areas on her hair and it's really subtle. It's basically just white, but it's just a soft sheen to it when, when I tilt it. I also added some gold around the eyes in the background and I actually added a few more just straight up gold eyes as well. I also did that a little bit with just watercolor where I added a few watercolored eyes. That way there's some that are inked in and then these really subtle eye shapes that are just in gold and red. So when you're looking a little bit closer, you can see that. And I love that that kind of detail can be in something so tiny, I think it makes it feel a little bit more like this little treasure where there's, it's not overly simplistic. There's some more things going on and some more things to find as you look closer at it, even though it is so little. And that is it for today. I am creating lots of these mini paintings for the convention, but anything that doesn't sell, I'll be putting right up at my shop as soon as I get back next week. So if you're interested in some tiny paintings, stay tuned. I'm sure there'll be a couple left that I can pop up there for you guys, but that's it for today. I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays and I do have a link down in the description. It'll take you to my art shop if you want to check out the originals that are there or the prints. I also have a link to my Patreon, which helps support this channel and the artwork that I do. And that's it for today. So I will see you guys at my next video. Bye.